Hello everybody, welcome to the first of these little standing holiday sessions which I hope will give you some way of just continuing your practice while you're uh, while I'm away and maybe you're know, just a little bit lost in, in, in practice. There's plenty of other stuff up on YouTube of course but this is just a fresh session so I hope you enjoy it. So start off nice and easy, I'll keep it very simple and straightforward. It's obviously very different to a live session. Just give yourself a few moments to settle in, think about those basic details of where your feet are, are they in a good position below your hips, pointing forwards or maybe with that little slight turn out. And think about having your weight a little bit forwards in your feet, and your hips dropping back to get this sitting position. See if you can release some of the tightness and the stiffness in the lower part of your back, especially just to allow the pelvis to find its correct orientation. That should allow a loosening around your hips and so feeling the movement up through your body to your shoulders. Start your arms just really hanging loose and flopping around your body but gradually introducing an image like moving through water to a little bit more definition, a bit more connectedness through your body. And just raise your arms. Good. Okay. So, sinking down a little. And try and keep in the back of your mind sense of this posture, think of those parallel lines through your body, feet to hips to shoulders. Don't get too sort of fanatical about that. No one's coming around with a ruler. Just so that you can begin to move and maintain a sense of what we might call orientation within that inner landscape of your body. yourself just slip into a nice easy going steady rhythm body expanding and contracting And then change into the wild goose. And part in the clouds.
Let's go on. Just keeping the rhythm, keeping the flow of the movement. Now dragon plucks the stars from the sky. One more on each side. And then change to First of all, we do pushing in two directions. Do the upward movement with the lengthening in your back. And then just the sideways movement. Don't try and put the turn in just yet. Just get that feeling of broadening across your back. Remember, let your hands stay slightly in front of your body as you do this. And also that when you do this, when you add the turn, you want to make sure that you turn in such a way that you're not imposing, tightening on that broadening movement. So the turn really comes from your hips, it begins in, in your hips, and just let it gradually expand up through your body. So from here, turn, don't force anything. Just notice where the sort of combination of expansion across your back and the turning gets to as it journeys through through your back. Eventually, we get to this point where it's as I've described it before, like a spiral expanding upwards with the turn. So eventually you could pick up a point somewhere up through your back and your ribs and realize that that particular level has turned just slightly more than the level below it, however you sort of label those levels. Do one more round. And then when we come to circling palms, remember the expansion again moves up through your body and down.
and then you can add the turn. and switch sides. and add the turn. Now rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. As always, very careful with your knees and your back. One more time. And rest. Shake it. Still in the parallel stance, transferring from side to side. giving yourself just that little bit of time on each leg to settle and that can mean a, a variety of things a kind of loosening sitting back in your hips it may mean an actual physical movement in your hips or it may just mean that there's a sort of sensation of sitting Feeling of your pelvis hanging in your spine, just gently moving from side to side. And as you settle in now, just let the opposite heel come up and turn. Give yourself plenty of time to develop this, this movement. So the turn isn't that far, I would say probably no more than 45 degrees, but a lot of that will depend on how much you're able to sink down to move without straining. What's important is 
that we don't get into the habit of doing something like this, straining to, to, to get around. Because we, we really don't want to build that habit before we start moving our arms, because moving our arms does actually encourage that a little bit, of course. Your hands in front of you. And just feel how they're moved by your body. You could imagine doing this in water, so that when you move across the side that you're moving towards the side of that body, outside of the body, you feel this sort of pressure of the water, the resistance of the water, you know how that affects your turn. Or you could imagine a different kind of image that in your hands you've got a tray of drinks that you don't want to spill. So your hands are remaining quiet. Both of those will give some kind of intent, some kind of function, and they're slightly different. So it's worth trying both images at different times. And this time we're going to go into hitting the ball in front of the shoulder. So what we've done with this movement is effectively combine that transfer of the weight, that sideways movement and the turning with the expansion and contraction on each side that we find in Dragon Plucks the Stars from the Sky. The hands are slightly different, I know, but that's just a, a relatively minor adjustment. One more time and then make the change to cow gazes at the moon as you can see my arms disappearing slightly but if you see it from the side you won't see my legs here again I'm not turning that far, there's a little bit further than some of the other movements that we did, but I turn here and then here and then here, and it's a little bit stronger, it's more stretchy than a lot of the exercises that, that, that we do. But don't do this, don't get to here and then push a little bit further, you can see I'm already tottering over and risking hurting myself. So ease into the movement. And then turn your hands, palm in, bring your weight to the middle and circle the ball. And go back the other way.
Good. So we can change the stance to the forward stance or the bow stance. And the, who you talk to. Sometimes referred to the bow stance because, or the bow and arrow stance, I was saying, because supposedly, uh, so sometimes archer stance. Um, in fact, it's a little bit wider than stances that, that, that I'm aware of that, 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 that you would take for, for archery. But it's just a name. Bow stance is, is, is as good as any. Same parallel lines, except of course they're going to move from one foot to to another. But it does mean that we want to try and avoid this or this. For the most part, there are some exercises where we can angle backwards a bit and so on. As much as possible, facing straight towards the front and just transferring your weight. So to about 60% in your front foot, maybe as much as 70 when you go into your back foot. And again, allowing time for settling. And begin to raise your toes and your heel again, trying to keep your body upright. So what we're trying to avoid is this. Now, a lot of this is going to be down to what's happening in your hips and your pelvis. And the feeling that I would describe as letting go or releasing around lower back, buttocks, that may involve a slight lowering of your, your hips, slightly more bending your knees, but not necessarily. And then stepping in. Likewise, when we move the leg, think about how the leg is moved without disrupting the equilibrium of the upper body Same thing on the other side. So as always, when we do the stepping, think of it as exploring a component of what we might call ordinary, everyday stepping, walking. But also as a, a very simple way of focusing your attention. If you can't remember complicated exercises, or sometimes it just doesn't feel appropriate to be to be doing that. Then a simple walking exercise can be very good. And then <coughs> raising toes and heel.
and stepping in. And then subject to how much room you've got, just take a couple of steps forwards or backwards. Remember to plant your foot. And then going back. Finally, let's bring a big Good. <clears throat> now have one foot forward again. Okay? It doesn't matter which foot. We'll start with pigeon spreads its wings. Forwards, feel the movement, pushing your elbows and then your hands out. Opening gently and sinking. The expansion in the front of your body as you go forwards. And then as you come back and your hands come in front, see if you can feel a, a little bit of that same broadening of, of your back that you would have felt in pushing in four directions earlier in the session. So part of the dynamic of this movement is this interaction expanding and contracting alternately between the front and back of your upper body. And then letting your hands drop down. Fisherman cast the net. Same thing here, as you go forwards, you feel the upper part of your front of your body expanding and then allow it to contract as you settle into the front foot. And then go back, feel the back expanding and then beginning to contract. So a slightly different rhythm, I suppose you could say, to the previous exercise, but the same basic dynamic. So, the movement of your arms is associated very much with changes all the way through your upper body. One part of the upper body has an expansion, There's, there will be a response in your arm or vice versa. As always, observing these movements more into focus and then pushing a wave Begin to factor in this raising of your heels and your toes. So there's a, a very much a, a moment of sort of settling in each leg. And then when you're ready, back to in the stepping. So we want to be able to do the stepping with 
no disruption to feeling the movement in the upper part of the body. Take your time. Be wary of overextending your arms in any direction. It's quite a tricky exercise because if we put too much effort, too much intent in in into the arms, then they'll take over the movement and it will start to become a bit wobbly, like 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 this. In general, particularly for a movement like this, we wouldn't expect our arms to really go out much further than a point. If I take this foot back, you'll see more easily. See, my hand is more or less a above my foot. It may be a little bit further at times, but then when I go to step in, it doesn't really change. So it's, it, it, it's there. When I push my hands out a little bit, around about here, I can feel a pull across my back and it's starting to get awkward. So keep, keep the arms fairly close and as always, sort of just let it build in its own time. So let's do those on the opposite side. So have your other foot forward, start with the pigeon spreading its wings. And as always, we have a sort of different dynamics going on. We have the forwards and backwards, the expansion and contraction. We have a certain amount of lengthening and contracting because our arms are coming up a little bit. So let's feel what's happening in, in the sides. We want to make sure that we've cultivated an environment that we have within that inner landscape of our body. The space to be able to allow those movements to take place without interfering with each other, without creating problems for one of the other movements. And this is where the significance of the basic posture really makes itself felt because we've got the basics then the space is there, we don't need to create it. So when you feel that maybe the raise in your arms is tight in your chest or something like that, whatever you notice, it's really a message to come back to an awareness of the basic movements in, in your body, not to, to struggle with this movement, but to think about your posture, think about how you're transferring your weight, so on and so forth. Now let's change to Fisherman Cast the Net. And then pushing a wave or pushing a boat. Begin to raise your heels and your toes.
And again, when you're ready, stepping in and then planting your foot. And then if you're comfortable with this, once again, take a couple of steps forwards, bring the back foot in, halfway in, and then step, draw your hands back as you step, go forwards, raise the back heel, bring the back foot in, half a step, and then drawing your elbows out as you step forwards. This time, bring the back foot in, but don't step forward, step back. Bring the foot in, bring your hands in, step as you turn your hands and go back. So a simple little walking pattern that you can do and can combine the arms. Now we'll do Wind Blows the Willows and Dragonfly Skims the Water member. Take this to whatever level it is, is suitable for you. When we come to the step in, it might just be a case of stepping in like this, or you might want to try and raise your foot. And you might want to add to that this movement there, the rotation there. But it's not a competition, just see how you feel today, take it from there. So I'll do this from my back to you to begin with. Here. Wind blows the willows, sink back and turn. Turn as you're settling into the foot. And that just slows the movement down a bit, focuses your attention into the settling rather than too many problems with the arms. Nice and relaxed in your shoulders, just letting the movement in your shoulders and your arms follow the turning of, of your body. And again, the turning of your body comes as you settle your weight. So priority always to let your weight settle. to raise your heels and your toes. Stepping in. And then just raising your foot if you wish, whichever way you wish to, but always very careful. And only to a height that is comfortable. As your foot comes up, you should be thinking of your hips dropping down. And then on the other side. So wind blows the willows, back foot, and then 
comfort. Raising your heel and your toes. That may allow for a little bit of an extra turn, a little bit more turn. But again, you, use as your guide not how far you think you should be turning or how far somebody else thinks you should be turning, but rather how it feels to you. Stepping in. If you're ready, raising your foot. And then as we're pushing a wave, if you're comfortable, I'm going to step back first of all. You turn, if you're going back, you turn towards your front foot. Plant the foot behind you, lower your hands as you move your weight, turn and raise the foot. And then to go forwards, plant the foot down in front, and turn, if you like, away from the foot so you bring the rear foot in and up. And then Dragonfly skims the water. Now rubbing your hands together. And glasses off, tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder, your arm. The other side. Into your back. Round your hips. And then your legs. Nice and light on your belly. And on to the upper part. So I hope that's been useful to you. Before we finish, just to, to remind you that we'll be back with our online program on 21st of September. And look out for the emails because there will be some face-to-face -face sessions being slowly developed through September, October time. We don't know how that's going to go yet. Uh, obviously there's a, a number of factors that, that, that may affect us while, while we're doing that, but you'll be kept up to date with the weekly e email bulletins. Get in touch with me if you don't get those bulletins and we can 
sort something out and put, I can easily put, put you on the list. So back to the parallel stance. Now embrace tiger, return to mountain, just sinking down and pushing up. Bring your arms around so you're holding the ball against your chest. Draw your hands in and that nice feeling just settle in. One more time. So stand in, think again of these parallel lines going up through your body. Maybe the midline as well. Just gently aware of your breathing, any kind of sense of movement within your body, the circulation, the beating of your heart. Whatever else you notice. Let's take a couple of nice, slow, gentle breaths to finish. Shake out. Thank you very much for watching.